This video tutorial demonstrates the key principles I use when performing ultrasound guided arterial line insertion, which I believe to be critical for succeeding, particularly when the anatomy is challenging. Assemble the required supplies and prepare for insertion in the usual manner. General principles apply, which I've described in more detail in my video on the anatomical landmark guided approach, which is linked to in the description to this video. Wherever possible, it's ideal to position yourself and the equipment so that you're inserting the cannula along your line of sight rather than across it. This avoids parallax error and generally increases accuracy for in-plane needle insertion in all ultrasound guided procedures. Always use sterile saline or other fluid for skin probe contact, not ultrasound gel. Gel makes everything too slippery, which can affect delicate handling of the cannula and probe, and it also makes cleanup and dressing much more difficult. The increased friction between probe and skin when using saline is actually an advantage as it lets you apply some gentle counter-traction to stretch and fix loose skin and to fix the artery in position so it doesn't roll away from your needle tip. When draping the patient's hand to create a sterile feel, don't bunch up the drapes or otherwise impede your ability to flatten the cannula when advancing into the artery. The key to avoid puncturing the back wall of the artery is to have an appropriately flat needle trajectory, something we all know from intravenous cannulation. Note here how flat the cannula has to be, in many cases often lying right against the patient's skin, and observe what this corresponds to in terms of the needle tip and cannula position in the artery. If it was any steeper, the stylet tip would pierce the back wall with advancement. This is also why a long axis view of the artery and cannula is useful, as we will discuss later. Start by performing a scout scan of the radial artery, with three objectives in mind, first of which is to assess its diameter or caliber. The artery in the lower image is the normal size you would expect in an adult, while the upper image shows an unusually small artery which should be suspected if the pulse is feeble and difficult to palpate despite a good non-invasive blood pressure measurement. The second objective is to locate a straight segment for cannulation and to exclude any tortuosities in the artery. The third objective is to ascertain the direction that the straight segment is traveling. Slide the probe up and down the wrist and note the direction of probe movement that keeps the artery stable on the screen. The artery should not slide to one side with probe movement. This allows us to choose our insertion point and to align our trajectory of insertion appropriately. In the transverse short axis view, an artery that bobs from side to side when sliding proximally and distally indicates that there is a tortuosity in the artery. This is more common and often more prominent in the elderly patient, as in this example. This can be further confirmed by turning the probe into a longitudinal orientation to try and get a long axis view and to ascertain if there is a straight segment. In this particular example, the kinks in the artery from the tortuosity are obvious. This is another example in which we've already committed to cannula skin insertion but the long axis view shows that there is a tortuosity ahead of the arterial puncture point, and there's a high probability that the cannula will not thread smoothly. It's best in this case to start over at a new, more proximal insertion site, rather than take this risk. It's absolutely critical to choose a skin insertion point that is precisely in line with the center axis of the artery, and to advance in this line. If not, the cannula will tend to slide past the artery rather than piercing it. Trying to correct for inaccurate skin insertion by swinging or steering the cannula towards the artery as you advance risks piercing the artery at a tangent to its axis, which can then cause difficulty in threading the cannula after you've pierced it. 
This is particularly true for small or arteriosclerotic arteries. There are a few ways to help ensure accurate skin insertion. First, you can align the artery in the center of the screen using the M-mode marker or dedicated centerline marker available on some machines. And then, line up your skin insertion point with the midline marker on the probe. There are, however, more precise methods to determine the optimal skin insertion site. If inserting an arterial line in awake patients, I recommend verifying the skin insertion point by using the local anesthetic infiltration needle as a finder. Insert it at a shallow angle into the subcutaneous tissues and slide the probe over it to visualize the needle tip. Tissue motion and local anesthetic spread as you anesthetize the skin insertion site will also show you where the needle tip is. If the tip isn't in line with the artery, adjust the skin insertion site accordingly lateral or medial until you are satisfied. If not using local anesthetic infiltration, you can also verify alignment by pressing the tip of the cannula into the skin without actually piercing it. Sliding the probe towards you and over the cannula tip and visualizing this indentation of skin before you actually make a puncture into the skin. If this indentation and thus the cannula tip isn't perfectly in line with the artery, adjust the skin insertion site appropriately in a lateral medial direction until you're satisfied. In some elderly patients, the overlying skin can be very loose and mobile. Gentle traction to fix the skin in place can be applied using the probe and the heel and fingers of the cannulating hand. This is where the friction of saline versus gel is an advantage. Insert the cannula at the chosen insertion point using a trajectory that is not too steep. A 30 to 45 degree angle can be used to pierce the skin more cleanly but thereafter, this should be flattened to something closer to 20 or 30 degrees. The exact angle will depend on the depth of the artery. The shallower the depth, the flatter the trajectory should be and vice versa. The principle is to have a trajectory that will avoid puncturing the back wall and allow the cannula to thread smoothly into the artery. Once the skin has been pierced, slide the probe towards the cannula tip to locate it. Unfortunately, the tip of the stylet is not always brightly echogenic within soft tissues, so use other cues of needle tip localization. An acoustic shadow is a sign that you are imaging the cannula shaft and not the tip. In this case, carefully slide the probe away from yourself until the shadow disappears to locate the tip. Bob the needle gently up and down and look for indentation of tissue layers to indicate that you're still centered on the target. Aim to advance smoothly and deliberately through each of the overlying tissue layers, feeling for the tactile sense of popping through each one to augment what you see on the ultrasound screen. Ideally, you want to see the arterial wall indent as the needle tip contacts it. Ensure the artery isn't sliding or rolling away as you apply more forward pressure and look to feel a distinct pop or give as the arterial wall is pierced. Check for backflow of blood in the hub of the cannula and with small scanning motions of the probe, you should also be able to see the bright echogenic dot of the metal stylet tip against the dark contrast of the arterial lumen. If you can visualize the stylet tip, you can advance it further under direct vision, keeping it in view by carefully sliding the probe away as you advance. Ensure you flatten the cannula trajectory appropriately to avoid piercing the back wall of the stylet tip. 
advanced just far enough to bring the plastic cannula itself into the artery. Some people like to walk almost the entire cannula into the artery under direct visualization in this manner. I don't recommend this. It simply isn't necessary and risks puncturing the back or side wall, particularly in narrow or tortuous arteries. Instead, advance the cannula just enough to be confident the cannula tip is in the lumen, which is a couple of millimeters at most, just like we do if performing surface landmark guided arterial line insertions. At that point, you can put the probe down and free up both your hands to handle the cannula. Check that the cannula is indeed within the vessel by withdrawing the stylet and observing for backflow of blood along the cannula. This is something I do for all vascular cannulation, intravenous or arterial, before I attempt to thread the cannula further into the vessel. This is the only 100% reliable sign that the cannula tip has reached and is still lying within the vessel lumen versus having punctured out the back wall. Always advance the cannula slowly and smoothly off the stationary stylet. In narrowed or tortuous arteries, I like to apply a slight rotatory motion as well. There should be absolutely no resistance to advancement. <laughs>